Hey friends, so today's project is I'm going to rehab some scaffolding that a friend of mine gave me. Um, uh, his father passed away and he wound up with a whole bunch of scaffolding um, that um, and he didn't want half of it, so I said, sure, I'll take it. I can put it to use. So the challenge is the scaffolding's really experienced. It's in great structural condition, but it's got a lot of surface rust and it needs to be painted. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a wire cut brush to just knock the surface off, rust off and um, get it cleaned up. And then I'm going to come back and treat it with some phosphoric acid, which will convert the rust chemically into... Um, uh, ferric phosphate instead of ferric oxide. Ferric phosphate is, a, or ferrous phosphate, whatever you want to call it. it, it's a real stable compound. And then I'm going to come back and paint it with a white primer followed by some yellow, make it nice and pretty. Um, so anyway, I am using a 3M 5100 series mask. I've got some respiratory protection and some eye protection, and I am using a disposable uh, lens guard on these. Um, the lens, you know, this is the best way to do this. So, um, and I've got some airflow that's going to blow the dust away. Um, I don't want my camera downwind of the dust, so I'm actually going to not show the grinding. Um, and uh, I'm going to put my music on and I'm going to grind away. So, so we'll be uh, back here in a bit with a update on uh, the progress of this. Okay, so I'm about halfway done. I am actually working on frame number four of six. Um, these are the smaller frames and um, I figured that if I put my camera next to the fan I can protect it from some of the dust that's being thrown off by the wire wheel. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put my protective gear on and um, for those that are curious I'm using a Harbor Freight Chicago Electric 91222 4 inch angle grinder and like every other Harbor Freight angle grinder it is grossly underpowered um, and uh, I'll be impressed if it makes it through this job. Alright, so let's do it to it. Oh, yeah, we're caught underneath the tripod. There we
Okay, so you can see there's not that much to it. And uh, in case you're wondering, I'm really not pushing down on this grinder that hard. And um, it's kind of frustrating because, you know, I did uh, spray foam in this house and we use these grinders. We actually started with the $10 black ones, but we would burn those out in a day. So we switched to these. These lasted a week. And we always thought, well, maybe we were sucking too much dust into them. And, um, you know, maybe they were just never designed to grind concrete with a wire brush. But, you know, this is Harbor Freight's wire brush and Harbor Freight's grinder. And, um, you know, this is actually what it's designed for. So if it doesn't handle this, you know, it's it's not a uh, issue with, with the, um, you know, being used for something it's not supposed to be done used for. It's just an issue with it, uh, you know, the quality of the motor. But, you know, if you've got something that's intensive, you know, these grinders are on sale for about $20 a piece, and just buy them and, you know, return them once a month if that's what it takes. Harbor Freight's good about the warranty. You know, I guess they figure enough people don't bother to return them or don't really actually use the tools. So it's kind of a shame, um, but, uh, you know, it, this will destroy this grinder. Um, and unfortunately, I've owned this one more than 90 days. And, you know, at $20, it's not worth spending 7 bucks on their extended warranty. So I'm going to stop the camera, and I'm going to get busy on the other side of this. And then I'll show you the next step, which is um, I've got some phosphoric acid etch and prep from Home Depot. It's about $15 a gallon. And um, the next step is just brush that on and wait a day and then prime it and paint it. Lots of fun. Okay, so once you've gotten all the rust off of the surface you're trying to recover or re rehabilitate, um, you need to treat it with phosphoric acid. So Home Depot sells Clean Strip brand Prep and Etch for $15 for a, I don't think, uh, 128 ounces. It looks like half a gallon to me. Um, no, maybe it's a gallon. I, you know, I don't remember how many ounces are in a gallon. But um, anyway, it, it goes a long ways and Home Depot has it. It's really convenient to just get it there because places like Sherwin-Williams don't even know what it is. So to um, apply this, you need uh, a disposable paintbrush. Um, I like chip brushes and you need a paint tray and the beautiful thing is if you've got a rusty old paint tray this is perfect because it'll remove the rust from it too and um, you know i'm on my fourth frame and you can see here i've still got plenty oops well, i just spilled some but i got plenty of it left in here and you just basically dip it in and brush it on and more is better And then you just leave it alone for a day, which is my kind of tool. Now, I suppose you could do this without gloves, but I'm wearing gloves because I just don't want it on my hands. You know, it's in Coke, and I drink Coke like it's going out of style. So, I guess we've all got a vice in life, and that's mine. if you you're like me you've got some concrete on here it's going to fizz when it hits the concrete that's okay so what it does is it takes the iron oxide or feo3 and it converts it to iron phosphate or fe uh, i don't remember what phosphate i think it's ph but um, the end result is that ferric phosphate will not react with water and oxygen to form rust, whereas steel will when it's not treated. So it's just a little basic organic chemistry. If you've got kids, this would make a fantastic science fair project to show how, you know, treated and untreated steel um, react.
one of the advantages to wearing gloves is you can just grab it when you need to and you don't have to worry about it getting on your hands. And try and get inside the tube here. So I've used this on uh, a boat trailer and on an Airstream frame and on other stuff. I've heard really good results with it as a pretreatment. You need to paint it within 48 hours of, um, so basically from now I have three days to get this painted, which isn't a big deal. As long as I get primer on it, it's painted. Um, so audit, you know, primer's tomorrow's project. So at this point, I need to let it dry uh, for 24 hours is what they say. So I've got two more frames to grind and get the rust off of and then treat like this. And then I've got a crossbar that's rusted that needs the same treatment. And then I'll be done for the moment. Hey friends, so I'm almost finished with rehabilitating these scaffold frames. So I let the phosphoric acid treatment dry for a day and then I painted uh, the frames with primer and now I'm coming back with a top coat. This is a Rust-Oleum white primer and then this is a Rust-Oleum safety yellow uh, top coat and it's just really straightforward. It's just, you know, brush it on. Unfortunately, it is a little bit slow. It would be more efficient to spray these but I don't have somewhere that I can spray them because the overspray would be a big issue. So I just have to kind of work my way through painting them and it takes you know five or ten minutes to paint each frame it's not the end of the world um, I have found that it is more efficient to paint everything I can see on one side and then turn the frame around and paint everything I missed rather than trying to reach through the frame or around the frame and uh, it would really be better if this got two coats but I actually need to use them this week so they're gonna get one coat and that's gonna be good enough If you are going to use the turn and paint method, you need to make sure you keep somewhere that you can grab them without getting too much stuff on your hands. And in this particular case, I can kind of paint around the backside without a whole lot of hassle. But it's really easy to knock it over if you're not careful when you're painting on the backside because it does require a little bit of pressure on the brush. See, I'm starting to rock it there. So in this particular case, the um, center braces are going to be my handholds for when I turn this. And of course, I'm wearing clothes that I don't care if they get a little paint splatter on.
I hope you've enjoyed my video. Um, if you'd like to see more of my videos, uh, click the like button and feel free to subscribe to my channel. I also recommend that you check out my playlists. Um, I tend to organize my videos um, by playlists when I think they're related to one another or that they constitute a topic that people might want to watch several of them. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them. Um, I typically won't respond to negative comments, so um, you can just kind of save both of us the trouble. But I do appreciate the positive comments and the questions. And when it's safe or appropriate, I will answer the questions. Now, if you ask me, you know, how to weaponize yellow paint, I'm not going to respond. Or if you ask me, you know, how much electricity can I safely put on my tongue, no, I'm not going to respond. Um, and I do, with some of my other topics like spray foam, I get questions that I just, for liability reasons, I just can't answer. Um, you need to make your own informed decisions anytime you're dealing with projects. So that's probably a good point for me to stop and turn the camera off. Thanks for watching my video and I hope you have a great day.